So 25 minutes to uh, the emergence of the heroes, Bob Crippen and John Young, and what a proud man he must be, his fifth time in space. A frustrating time, this, Geoffrey, surely, that uh, they're now safely on the ground and they have to stay there. Well, they do. They uh, clear all of the toxic fumes, they blow it out of the way, and, uh, the, of course, there's a lot of work to be done now. This is the point. Um, unlike the... Uh, Apollo and all the previous flights where this is the end, what you're looking at there, that's got to be used again and again, up to 100 times. Columbia, this is Convoy 1, how do you read? Convoy 1, uh, this is the Columbia, we reached the land clear. Uh, Roger, same here. Well, NASA must be delighted. I received word that uh, flight controller said you can cheer, lads, but only for 15 seconds. Then it's back to business. And five months' business, in this case, to get that one ready to fly again. Now, why are the vehicles standing away from Columbia? Well, they have a big wind-making machine, which is a big uh, fan, and they're actually blowing air over. And Columbia, if you will hold your... Uh until we verify the valves, we'll get right back to you. Roger, you guys making a call. I'll just you. Okay, thank you, Crip. This is to ensure the uh, safe removal of all the toxic gases. That well, that's right. There's a lot about. of vapor around the outside as well, not simply a potential well, vapor on the inside. Convoy, so they need it clean really before they cut close. crew standing by to move in. Crippen, I'm assured, and uh, one of my colleagues here in the studio picked it up as they came in. He's a Texan, don't forget, and Texans are very proud of their home state. Said uh, it was the best way he could think of uh, coming to California. His, his first space flight, there he is, uh, sitting in the cockpit. And there are the sniffers, the uh, tubes being held out there, just checking what the level of vapour and toxic gas might be. This five months of preparation we're talking about has got to be reduced to two weeks, of course, for an operational uh, flight, and that means an awful lot of work to be done. So really we're just in the middle of a cycle here, even though the drama has uh, taken place, we now know it works, and works well. Yes, you're right. We're all patting each other on the back as if we'd actually achieved something. But uh, if this is to be a success, as you, uh, as you rightly point out, the story really starts here. That's right. It is a space transportation system, and we're just looking at a part of it. We're having problems, uh, though, NASA, clearly, not with their system. We're having troubles reaching Kieran. Let's have one more go to see if we can uh, reach Kieran Prenderville at the Edwards Air Force Base. Are you with us, Kieran? Bring us up to date. Yeah, the atmosphere now is, 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 is just tremendous. All the bottled-up tension of the last few days seems to have evaporated in the baking heat of the Mojave Desert here. Smashing atmosphere, it's, it's quite marvellous. Um, NASA has taken so much stick lately from politicians and journalists because of quite reasonable worries about how much this whole thing has cost and is it worth it. Well, perhaps they're entitled now to some sort of technological vindication. The overview is, is doubtless yet to come, but for today, Surely today belongs to NASA and, of course, to John Young and Bob Crippen. The shuttle worked. It went up flawlessly. It came down without a hitch. It looked absolutely marvellous. It won't be long now before the astronauts come out, and when they do, they're likely to get such applause. Anyway, as I say, a, a, a tremendously successful mission. Kieran, thank you very much indeed. I uh, don't know whether Columbia's had uh, as tough a time as you have getting across from uh, the Cape on Sunday to Dryden today. Thank you for your help in covering this historic mission. We ought to remember, perhaps, Geoffrey, that this has all happened under the eye of the world's press and television. Tremendous credit to NASA for that and the Americans, uh, unlike the Russians, which uh, do it the other way around. It's an, we mustn't forget those tiles. They can't really be inspected, all of them now, just one or two, and that's part of the problem. They've got to last a hundred flights. So whether Columbia makes a hundred flights or not remains to be seen. Ah. But uh, she certainly uh, earned her housekeeping uh, this, uh, this last 54 and one half hours. On the button, down she came. Right. Geoffrey uh, Pardo, 
Thank you very much for being part of our Columbia mission. Great pleasure. Um, day certainly I will remember for a long time. I hope too a day that you will remember. Let's just, in the closing moments of this special transmission, relive some of the excitement of this man's first journey into space in a reusable spacecraft. Due to start on Friday, it uh, wasn't until uh, Sunday, uh, just after one o'clock our time, that uh, we found Columbia could actually fly. The takeoff from the Cape was perfect. Six, five, four, we've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. America's first space shuttle. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. Just after 1,300 hours, British summertime, and Columbia is away from the Cape. And then came the pictures we were unable to bring you on Sunday because we lost the link. The separation of the solid rocket boosters, two minutes and 12 seconds into the flight. Two minutes, four seconds, standing by for SRB step confirmation. 30 miles up, there they go. And the three main engines of Columbia continue to burn, thrusting her on up into space. Then the tiles, the missing tiles on the engine cowling, would that be a problem? By Sunday evening, John Young at least, now five times a spaceman, was convinced that nothing could go wrong with this mission. Hey, it might be one of the better ones, though. Monday came the call from the vice president. Who's that, John? Yes, sir. How you doing? Uh, we're just having a lot of fun up here. Hey, listen, I'm glad to talk to both you and Crip. How's he behaving? I'm trying to behave pretty well, Mr. Vice President. Well, listen, it's a far way from when we were doing our running down there in the Cape, but I certainly want to congratulate you. When we were doing the... Uh, and we wouldn't we all like to congratulate uh, Bob Crippen and Commander John Young? Well, that's it. Columbia is safely on the ground, absolutely on schedule, proving that man can go into space and, as we saw just 11 minutes from now, make a safe return in a spacecraft which is capable of making the journey many, many times. Thank you for being with us for this coverage of the historic mission. On behalf of all of us, all of us who've been working on the Columbia program, goodbye. 2,500 feet clear. You're coming. Go down. 50 feet. 40. 30. 20. Stand. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. Touch down. Those gears. 10 feet.